Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about backup. With all of the things that we've been doing to set up the server, it's important that you don't lose those settings. That if a hard drive fails or if something goes wrong, that you don't have to start all over again reconfiguring your server because you didn't have a good backup uh, and you weren't prepared for it. So we're going to talk about a couple of different backup strategies today to help you uh, set your server up in such a way that you feel like, okay, everything's ready to go, it's backed up, I'm okay. So if you come into the server application here, you just come to the Time Machine area right here uh, on the Services menu. Now, you can see that I've already got it set up, so I'm just going to show you how I did that. Uh, notice the big on-off switch, and all we have is a very simple backup destination area right here in the settings. That's pretty much it. So if you click this edit button right here, you'll get a drop down that will basically give you uh, any drives that your server finds that it can use as a backup. And so you'll see here I've got my server hard drive, that's my main hard drive, I've got my secondary hard drive that's inside my Mac Mini, and then I've got a Drobo here uh, with a bunch of data. And so it just depends on how you want to back this up. You certainly can back up your internal server drive to your other internal server drive and just have them sort of copy back and forth your time machine stuff if you want to do time machine backup. Or you can get a big volume like this on a, as a Drobo and do the backup. Now, a couple of things to understand here is that when you're connecting this and you're hooking this up, you are also setting it up for all of your users in your home to be able to back up to this drive wirelessly. So you're setting up these wireless backups so that different laptops in your home and those kinds of things will be backing up to a central location. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a minute. So you're going to want to make sure that whatever drive you choose here is a big drive. Now, understand this isn't necessarily the drive that you're going to be backing up your actual server hard drive to. So whatever I'm, I'm selecting is not what I'm going to be backing up my main hard drive here to. That would be another drive or a different way that we would do it to the same volume. This is for backups for all of your clients on your network that are going to be backing up wirelessly to your uh, either a network drive or a drive you've got attached to your server. And this is really what is a cool part of server because it's this is a non-supported feature outside of a server. Uh, for regular uh, Mac computers to be able to back up wirelessly. You can do it and it's kind of a hack, but, uh, but it's not supported. But here on server, uh, Lion server, it is supported to be backed up wirelessly. So that's a pretty kind of, an, it's kind of a neat deal. So you can make sure everybody's backing up. They don't have to plug into drives and everything's okay. So what I did is selected my Drobo here. Now you'll notice this little warning here where it says the disk drive may not be supported by back, time machine backups over a network. Basically all that's telling you is, is hey look, if your uh, drive that's attached to your server gets disconnected somehow or you accidentally pull the firewire out or the or the USB out uh, during a backup you're gonna lose your backup so they just want to make sure that they're covering themselves so that no problem happens so you're gonna see that on here unless you click an internal drive so basically all you do is click use for backup and it will then set your drive up as a time machine destination right here and so what I'm going to show you uh, next is I'm going to show you what it looks like from a client machine to connect to your time machine backup so we can get those client machines set up. And then I'm going to come back and, t and talk to you about how you back up your internal uh, hard drive for your server so that you have uh, multiple ways to make sure that your data is in good shape. We're on uh, a remote computer. Uh, it's a computer that's a client in my network that I need to set up for time machine. So this happens to be a, uh, a laptop that we've got in the house that I want to have backup wireless. And so now that I've got Time Machine set up, let's see how that works on setting it up on a client. So you just come up to System Preferences, and you click that. And you'll notice this one here, this particular um, laptop, is a, a Snow Leopard install. So it's not even a Lion install, and I wanted to, to show you that so you can see that it, it works kind of across uh, the different Mac areas as well. Uh, so you come over here to Time Machine, you click on that, and you can see typical Time Machine uh, area, you select a backup disk, and so as we click, uh, click that, you'll notice it says now backups on server. And so what's happened, it's created this network uh, folder, basically, of backups. And all I've got to do is select those and say use for backup. And so now what's going to happen is it's going to ask me for a password in order to make that happen. So let me type that in here. And then it's going to go out to connect to that backup disk and there it is. It's set it up, everything's ready to go, it t toggles it on and it's ready to back up in the next 14 seconds. You can see everything's ready to go. Now I'm going to toggle this off for a second because I don't want that to take uh, place right away. And what I want to do is I want to show you uh, for a minute what this looks like and what it does on the 
uh, on your actual server. So let me just uh, pop this down for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up uh, Finder. And here is my Drobo. That's where I put my backup folder. If you remember, if I just slide this down here, if you remember from here, right, my Drobo is my backup destination. Here's the Drobo mounted on my server. What happens, it creates a shared items folder, okay, on whatever uh, drive that you use. And then within that, there's a backups folder. And then what it does is it creates a sparse uh, image bundle right here of uh, of the backup for any computers that you've got so as you continue to list computers here different sparse bundles will be put in there and within that sparse bundle that's basically a disk image it's a package and so inside there are, is everything that we needed to back up for time machine it's all within that bundle and you can see here we backed up a drive here it's got a 74 uh, gigabyte size so you can see that everything's been backing up there and that way what will happen is just like every other computer when your users are using on your network their, their laptops or whatever it will be backing up to that drive that you selected on your server and so it really is it's a great convenient way of making sure everything's backed up you can access time machine like you normally would with with these particular things and it works out great okay now that I've shown you how to get the remote client set up what I'm gonna do now is talk to you about how do you back up the internal drive on your Drobo uh, on your Drobo, I'm sorry, on your server. And so for some of you, you may just want to attach an external drive and have a Time Machine back up that way. Uh, or you might want to use a bigger volume like a Drobo uh, to be able to back things up to. And it could be a network drive, could be a RAID, whatever you, uh, whatever you want to set up. Now, what you can do normally when you back up your server drive, remember I told you that your main server drive is not going to be backed up through this Time Machine interface. You've got to set that up separately. So what you could do is you could come up to your Time Machine, you can open System, uh, open Time Machine Preferences, and as that window comes up here, uh, you can take a look at it and you can just basically set up an external drive here, select the disk, and go for it that way. Uh, or, like I said, you can use a Drobo like I've got here. But to use a Drobo, you got to do it a little differently because you don't want to back up to the Drobo as a main volume. Uh, there's some problems with that. Uh, not only that, but you'll start to fill up your Drobo, and that's a problem. And I know for some of you say, well, why don't I just partition the Drobo up so that I just uh, have different partitions so that my computer sees them as different drives. Well, you could do that, but the problem is it kind of defeats the purpose of the Drobo, right? Com uh, devices like the Drobo allow you to take out drives, put new ones in, and kind of expand as you grow uh, your data. And so what can happen over time is if your server drive gets too big or your data needs get too big, now you've got to move everything off that Drobo and repartition it again uh, to get it to the sizes that you want it to, to be. And so I don't recommend that. I recommend just having a, a, something like the Drovo be one big volume. And then what you can do is you can then back up your server internal hard drive to that Drobo. Let me show you how you do that. You're going to do it a little bit differently because you don't want to just attach it because it'll eat up all the space. Uh, on Drobo's own website, if you take a look at their support site, they've got an area that talks about how to back up uh, Lion uh, Time Machine with your Drobo. And they've got this little program called Time Tamer that you can use that's kind of a series of scripts that helps you make that backup happen. And so what I did is I already downloaded Time Tamer. I've got it sitting right here. And let me just show you what that looks like. So you just uh, click on Time Tamer and you launch it. And what it's going to do is it's going to uh, create a sparse image bundle uh, actually on your uh, Drobo that it will back up to. So what you do is you choose a folder. And so what I did is on my Drobo itself right here, I created a uh, folder called Server Backup. And so I'm going to create a sparse image in here just like we did with the shared items. So I'm going to choose that area right there. And then what you do is you put in the size that you want that uh, disk image to be. So it's kind of like a virtual disk. So how big do you want that to be? And they recommend it's double the size of your system drive that you're backing up. And uh, what I'd say is maybe one and a half or, or maybe two, uh, two times. And so you can do like a terabyte if you wanted to, or you can do uh, one and a half terabytes. Uh, I'm just going to do, uh, I'll just do one terabyte for right now. And remember, you got to do it in uh, megabytes. So right, so five and gigabytes. So 500 gigabytes, uh, you know, would be that drive. So so a thousand gigabytes would be a terabyte. And then you click OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to now create a sparse image file that you can use to back up to. And so I'm going to come back to my Drobo here. And we're going to go to that folder, Server Backup, and we're going to watch what it creates. And as you can see right here, let me just expand it. Uh, we've created a sparse image bundle. And what that basically has is it has my server name and it's got, uh, you know, it's, it's got the uh, ID of it so that it knows what to back up. And so that's basically what happens. And then what you would do is you would go into uh, Time Machine here uh, under Select Disk. 
Let me pull that up. And then what will happen is once that thing's done creating, it'll show up here. It's still doing its thing in the background, uh, creating this sparse image file, so it's not quite available yet. Uh, but once it's available, it will actually create that uh, disk up there. And uh, then you can go ahead and attach to it and start your Time Machine backups to it. And what will happen is, is Time Machine will automatically mount it and unmount it and back up to it. So that's one way you can do your internal drive and make it work that way. Now, for me, I'm not quite as concerned with Time Machine backups, uh, the, uh, you know, making those happen uh, on my server, my main server drive, because I keep a lot of my stuff that changes frequently either on my second internal drive or on my Drobo itself. Uh, but what I'm really concerned about is turnaround. I don't want my server down, and if that main hard drive goes down, I don't want to wait a long time before I've got to then be back up and running and have everything ready to go. Uh, you can see that it says it was successfully set up here. The message just came up. Okay, so I, I, I'm worried about that. So I want to make sure I'm back up and running right away. So to me, it's more important that I have an actual bootable clone of my internal server hard drive. And so that, that way, if my main drive goes down, I can just boot from the external or I can quickly uh, recover everything that I had before onto a main hard drive just by recovering that instead of having to go through a time machine restore and all that kind of stuff, which takes more time. So let me show you how I do that. Let me close this down here and this, and let me show you how I do that. And I do that with a program called SuperDuper. And let me just show you. It's done by a company called Shirt uh, Pocket Software, and uh, it's a great program for cloning hard drives. Now, you can clone hard drives for free. You don't have to actually buy the software, but if you want to set it up on an incremental basis with a schedule so that it's automatically doing it for you so you don't have to think about it, then you do need to pay for it. And, and I recommend that you do so that it's on a schedule so that you don't forget. And the price here, as it says, is $27.95. It is, uh, it's money well spent. This program is solid and works really well, and you can use it for all kinds of things. You can clone all kinds of other uh, things as well, like a laptop, I usually take a clone drive with me in case my laptop drive goes down. So let me show you how this works so that you can get a feel for uh, setting up SuperDuper. So when you launch SuperDuper, this is what you get. You get a uh, little window like this. And basically, it's pretty simple. You just take the drive that you want to copy. So for instance, let's say I want to copy this, uh, this internal drive here. You put it to the place that you want to copy it to. All right, and in this case, I've got it set up on a uh, sparse image that I've got on my Drobo, but you would just basically uh, pick an external drive that you want to back up to and set it up that way. So you've got your from and you've got your to set up. Then you have these different options, right, on what you want to back up. And you can back up all files, just the user files, that kind of stuff. Uh, just select the backup all files uh, setup. There's some scripting you can do, but you don't need to do that for this. But just back up all files. Then what you've got is you've got an options area in here. And this gives you different options you can set up. Now, here's the thing that you want to do. You want to do this smart update uh, right here. And it tells you, you know, from that one drive to the other, you want to do a smart update because what that does is that when it does a backup, it doesn't go and backup everything all over again. It only backs up the things that have changed. And so that'll save you a lot of time because this first backup takes a long time. You don't want to keep doing that every time. So just do the smart update and then click OK. All right. And we don't need to uh, worry about doing anything on completion. OK. You just click OK. Then what you can do is you come in here and you schedule. And so you can set up a schedule now on when you want to do that. You can copy it on certain weeks, certain days. You get to pick the time you can copy it uh, to. And it's nice because it gives you a little description here that tells you what it's going to do and how it's going to make that work. And if you just cl click OK, it schedules the copy for you. See, it's working to schedule the copy. And then what it does is it shows you all the different times it's going to copy and the ones that it has uh, when it's done it. And you can just click Copy Now, and it'll start that whole uh, copy process and, and make it work. In fact, why don't I just uh, click that right now and give you a feel for what this looks like as it starts its copy. It gives you a warning telling you I'm going to begin this copy in so many seconds. And then once it does, it starts its backup. And so here it goes, and now it starts its process. It'll prepare the files, mounts the drives, prepares the drive it's copying to, and then it starts to copy all of the files. And the nice thing is it tells you time elapsed and all that, but when it's done, it'll, it'll, uh, when it's on a schedule, it'll automatically close itself down. This time it won't because I initiated it, 
but it's really neat. So it'll start and it'll stop and uh, and it'll happen in the background. And then you've got a bootable clone so that if your drive goes down, you can boot from your external hard drive uh, or you can quickly recover and restore to that hard drive. Uh, for those of you that want to know a little bit more about SuperDuper, maybe how to do multiple copies, maybe you've got uh, two drives you want to copy to one Drobo or one volume, uh, I did another screencast on that in the series and I'll put a link here uh, up on the screen that you can click on so you can see how that works as well. Okay, well that's all I have for this week on uh, Lion Server. So that should get you set with enough of the components to help you get your backup uh, set up and ready to go. Uh, I'll be back at you next week with uh, something else talking about Lion Server. And so again, thanks for listening in. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you do more things with your Mac.